Welcome back everybody and what I'm going to be doing today is the first in a series and what I'm going to be talking about is a three layer principle of a British Army soldier's personal equipment. So I'm doing this video in a response to a request. Basically I've had a couple of people asking me about what I carry in my belt kit and my webbing. Um, and what I thought was instead of just doing about the belt kit, which is generally the most interesting bit of kit that people want to know about, is I'll do the complete picture. So I'll do the three principles. Of the first one being your own personal clothing and what's in the pockets and stuff. What that does is it helps you survive. The second one being your fighting order. So your belt kit, your body armor, helmet, and your day sack. So that's what you fight with. And the third one being your bergen or rucksack, which is what you live out of. Okay then, so the first layer of any soldier's kit is what he's wearing and what's in his pockets, okay? It doesn't start with a belt kit, especially, I know in the British Army probably do it a little bit more than a lot of other armies, we work off what's in our smock and in our pockets and have a lot of stuff close to hand. So if the worst was to happen, you've got that layer of kit to help you survive and you know fight another day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about everything I'm wearing, what's in my pockets, why I'm carrying it, reasons for it. And this is based on 33 years worth of soldiering experience, okay? This isn't based off me watching other videos on YouTube or just reading about it in a book. I've used this kit operationally all around the world and I know what works and what doesn't work. So going from head to toe then. First thing, obviously on my head, I've got a jungle hat. So when I'm not wearing a helmet, which is obviously what you're gonna be wearing when you're actually in close proximity to an enemy if you're assaulting an objective or whatever if you're in a fob or whatever you know if you're carrying out maybe a reconnaissance something like that you potentially would be wearing something like a soft hat like a jungle hat personally i really like a jungle hat when it comes to any kind of headwear other than a helmet um, what it does it you won't overheat too much wearing something like this like a woolly hat you would do if you was moving at speed with kit on um, it provides a layer of camouflage it, it covers your, your eyes and from the from the sun and the rain um, you've got a toggle around your neck to keep it on your head um, and on my one here then I'll just show you this is a platter tap one uh, I've put a couple of ranger eyes on the back so if you're moving through you know close foliage at night and um, the person behind you can see you if it's really super dark on the top there's a bit of glint tape so that's an IFF method for aircraft and on the inside you've got an orange patch there and again, you could turn your hat inside out and that's another IFF method. That's also like a little pocket there, you know, you could potentially stuff something in there like a, a small map or a rag or something like that. I don't personally use that, but that's there for that reason. Okay then, so that's the hat. Um, going down from there then, what we've got is the smock, okay? Um, again, this is a, a bit of kit made by Platt Attack, which is an Australian company. Um, Personally, I think they make some great kit. It's a shame it's not so available in the UK. Um, however, there is a UK-based company called Lumine who um, stock these. Great bit of kit, it's called a Badger Smock. So nice and lightweight, but actually it's got some good features on it, like toughened elbows and stuff. So if you're crawling through, you know, doing your section attacks or whatever, they're not gonna wear out as easy. Um, loads of really good pockets. So it's got an actual integral um, compass pocket there which a lot of smocks you know, don't have um, unless you get it tailored on. The issue ones do have one on a pocket here, but it's not a very good one. It's kind of open topped and it's, it's, it's a, bit, a little bit too small for a compass to be fair. Um, anyway, loads of good pockets. So there's the zip pockets there. You've got stuff like maps and um, compasses, um, your, your bits and pieces, torches, stuff like that. In. But just a good smock, nice and lightweight, nice and robust. So what I'm gonna talk about is what I've actually got in my pockets. Um, so in this right one here, what I've got is my admin line, which I'm sure anyone that's watching my videos will be familiar with. So I've got an Exitax sleeve with a lighter on it. I've got a whistle. So a whistle's a great bit of kit for survival, for attracting attention, but also for military use, you can use this for signaling certain things like um, certain phases on an ambush or an attack. You know, once things have gone noisy, shouting is not going to be heard so well this is quite a distinctive noise when you hear it um, i've got a swiss army knife and my racing spoon okay so you never want to be without your spoon um, when you're out in the field that's attached by a small carabiner to a little loop that was actually you know made parts of the smock i've had these tailored on myself and other smocks 
but yeah that's that's part of the smock there and that all goes away in there if i was wearing body armor then i probably might move that stuff there up to this pocket up here just so it's not pressing against my body when i put the body armor on okay then going into this pocket here this is every commander's favorite bit of kit and this is called a tams so tactical aid memoir and what you've got there is all, all the stuff there for all your orders for writing your orders um i've got waterproof paper in the back there as well so it's for actually formulating your orders your plans and stuff for commanders so you really need to have that on you so it's ready to hand so that when you're on o groups and stuff or delivering orders you've got that ready to go on the front end the pocket i've already mentioned yeah i've got a compass in there um, and then on the left hand side here what i've got is a small a very diddy little torch and this the reason why i've got that in there this is for navigation at night and it's only got a small pinprick on a piece of black tape that i put over the front so that it doesn't cause a massive amount of glare so you can just about see there's only a little bit of light coming out of there and that's there for a reason so it's not a big floodlit you know thing so that's attached by a big piece of cord as well so if for any reason you was you got that out in the middle of the night and it dropped it's still attached in you can just pull it back in and put it back in your pocket so i don't put anything else in that pocket for the reason of if i am navigating at night i put my hand in there all that says the torch nothing else is going to fall out of that pocket okay left hand pocket then what i've got is a small container waterproof container with some purification tablets in so there's a whole load of puri tabs in there i've got a mosquito head net and i've got some of the issue cam cream so that's just a few bits and pieces in that top left pocket there going down the smock then bottom pockets what i've got is on the left hand one i've got a pair of the issue oakley gloves from afghanistan so you definitely need to have hand protection for lots of reasons for operating weapons for potential stabs or needles or places you go around the world nowadays places like afghanistan there's bloody needles and stuff left everywhere you can potentially you know get a, a, a scratch and get some sort of horrendous disease and just for camouflage for your hands too you know the right hand pocket then i've got a pacer so this is what you use in places like the jungle um and you know other you know wooded areas and various other places just to help your navigation and i'm sure lots of people will be familiar with those there's also ranger beads you can use but personally i prefer using that mechanical pacer okay on this smock then on on the badger smock what you've got on the side here then you've got an extra pocket and what i put in this one is my military survival tin so i've done a complete video on this already and i'll put a link on the video to that here okay so i'm not going to go through what's in there but obviously that's in my pockets because it's part of my survival kit right then moving down the body on my left hand side here then what i've got is my map and the reason why it's in the left hand pocket specifically is so i've got my hand on my weapon i can get my, my map out with the other hand and still have my weapon ready to fire with one hand on the other side so the map then so i've got a one in twenty five thousand map there and it's within an ortlieb map case i think these are the best map cases you can get they're pretty hard wearing they're durable they're 100 percent waterproof and they're not too bulky some of them put like a silly nylon back and backing on them and stuff but these these are great um, and they've got tie-off points there and i've got that tied to the loop in my pocket so that again if i was to drop it if it was to get blown out my hand in heavy winds or whatever it's not going to go anywhere and that's obviously a survival item you've got to have means of navigation okay really important for soldiering right hand side pocket then what i've got in another port lead bag then is my notebook so let's say another Ortley bag and I've got that tied off the same as the other one with one of those little dinky carabiners on the end um, especially for commanders really important to have a notebook and pen on you but really for everyone you should have a notebook and pen very important to making notes things like orders um, recording various incidents and stuff you know making um, getting ammo um, replens things like that so i've got a whole load of pens pencils and stuff like that in there lumi pens um and then on this i've actually got a waterproof right in the rain notebook there so that 
if it is raining when I'm making notes, you know, I'm not going to leave it out in the rain, but if it's raining and it gets, it gets a bit wet, then it's not going to be wrecked. That's all within that waterproof case anyway, though. So if I was going through really, really wet grass, if it was pissing down rain, if I'm doing a, a river crossing, something like that, this is keeping it nice and waterproof. And that's 100% waterproof in that bag there. So that's in my right hand pocket. So I'm just wearing normal army shoe combat trousers. Um, I have used the cry ones before. Um, they're really expensive and as soon as they get wrecked, you know, you're talking about another lot of money to get them fixed. Nothing wrong with the army issue ones to be fair. Footwear then, what I've got, these are Aku Pilgrims, um, Gore-Tex boots, you know, there's pros and cons to Gore-Tex boots, um, but you know, for use in Western Europe and the UK and stuff, especially in the winter like it is now, I prefer to have Gore-Tex boots. Yeah, they are going to take longer to um, dry out, but they're, um, these are a very good pair of boots. And again, I've done a review on these. I'll put the link uh, to that in this video. Okay then, so that's the first layer covered. That's what clothing I'm wearing, what kits in my pockets, and it's given me that level of survival and survivability that a soldier needs when he's on the battlefield. So what I'm going to be talking next then in the next video is about the soldier's belt kit and fighting order. Stay prepared.